Hey guys, I am Basil. This is Will. Oh, yeah, hey. And today we are going to show you how to upgrade your ET 115 or 125 to one of those new Cinewhoops. Basically, we're going to show you how to, in less than five minutes, we're going to show you how to add a HD camera, either the run cam split is what we did, and we're pretty sure the Caddx will fit too. All right, so if you've seen our last video, we literally took the whole thing apart physically flipped around the motors and the flight stack because the way the mount is designed and the way the whole pattern is in the frame, you had to physically turn it around. Yeah, so we're gonna work smarter, not harder this yeah. time. And we're gonna do what I was talking about in the last video about resource mapping. I hinted at it, but at this time, we're gonna go ahead and show you the quick way of doing it while, uh, without taking the whole quad apart to reverse the direction of the motors uh, and the gyro and all that. So you can turn the camera mount around without taking the quad apart. So I'm sure you're asking why we're doing that. Well, the purpose of this mount right here is to put that camera in front of these little prop guards, or whoops, I guess people call them. So this mount is not designed by us. It was designed, I think it was a variation, something of Albert Kim did. Um, I already contacted him. He gave me the okay to post his link to Thingiverse, I think it is. So if you have a printer, go for it. I know there are guys in our Facebook group who are selling these. So if you're interested in getting one of these uh, mounts, they're like, I know people, they're about $10, $12. Everyone's charging for them. Um, link will be below to our Facebook group where you can get, get them. Um, we will not be selling these mounts because it's not our design and we don't have a 3D printer here. Yeah. So there it is. All right. So now we're going to show you how to do it. And, um, and you will need a computer for this and beta phone. All right, before we begin, mine's a Free Sky. It comes with an AC900 receiver. Yes. Will now, this also work with the Fly Sky? The resource mapping that we're about to do, the, the changes in beta flight we will uh, be doing, will not affect whether you have Spectrum, Fly Sky, or Free Sky. So the receiver does not matter in this case. Gotcha. Um, we're just changing the how the flight controller reacts with the motors. Gotcha. Right. All right, so the whole software mapping thing I was talking about, basically it's resource mapping. If you ever watch any of Bardwell's videos, he actually has a great video on how to do resource mapping. What we need to do on this, instead of taking the whole thing apart, is do resource mapping and change the direction the, the gyro sees as straight, or as front. Um, so I've already gone ahead and done that on a file. We will attach it so on the website and I'm sure there'll be a link below on that, uh, where to get that. But basically the information will be there. You'll literally copy and paste the information into your CLI and then it'll be changed. So you don't have to take it apart. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one right here. I'm going to reverse it just so you guys see. And then the, basically I'm going to turn the back of the quad into the front of the quad by only doing software reverse, um, uh, changes, no hardware changes. So we're going to go ahead and plug this guy in. But I guess to make it clear, we're gonna you have to install the camera first. Yeah, this is when the camera's installed and all right. that, but I'm just using this one as an example right, because it's, we, it's in its natural state. Got it. Here's what you guys are gonna wanna do. So the first thing you're gonna do, go to your CLI. And because we're changing other stuff, instead of doing just a diff file, in this case, I am gonna do a dump all. Okay. So I'm gonna type the word dump space all. You said dump. I said dump. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> so you're going to have a whole bunch of line of okay. information load there. So make sure you're at the bottom and then just click, scroll up all the way, and then copy everything up to that beta flight part. And what you want to do is copy that, get a notepad file, and just paste it somewhere. WordPad, notepad, whatever you got um, on your computer, and then save it. Um, ET1T ET original. ET115 original and that way it's there and that way if you screw something up you can go back to it or you're like hey I don't want to do the center loop thing and you just reverse it again um, it's just the easy way to back it up so, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect the beta flight and then we're gonna go to the CLI and then the file that you guys will get or that you'll pull up is just a bunch of text right here and you'll just copy it and then you'll go to this command line right here and paste it hit enter it's gonna reboot and that's it no that way literally all you need to do so we reverse. instead of the last video we did it was taking it apart and taking us an hour and a half 
Yes. That's all you have to do. That is why I gave the look when you said, let's take it apart. I was like, there's no all need right, to take it so apart. All right, so you fancy schmancy programmer. Let's see if this thing works. All right, so now the front is the back and the back is yeah, the front. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it down. All just right. here on the floor right here. And I'm gonna use the LED as the front of the quad. And we got it armed. So you'll see, back is at me, forward, et cetera. Okay. Literally all it did is reverse everything electronically because there's, instead of taking the motor, unplugging it, moving to a different port because it's a, um, the board is, the pins are a part of the board. There's not movable wires or plugs. Mm -hmm. In this case, you can do the resource mapping by changing what pin controls what motor. Okay. So that's what we did there. The only difference, Problem is, if you do that, then the gyro is still pointing the natural direction is facing forward, so right. you have to reverse that. So then you put a line, a command line information in it that reverses the gyro 180 degrees. Okay, the so axis. the gyro, the arrow, if you take the cover off, it's gonna be pointing backwards. Yes. So you're pushing forward, pulling back, going right, going left, and that's all there is to it. All right, so what you're gonna see is the command line information I did change this line right here. The yaw is 180 degrees on the board and sensor alignment. But, guys, I've done all the hard work for you. If you have the ET115 or 125 and you are trying to make a center loop out of it and you are reversing it based off the video we did to where you need to get the camera to the other side and reverse the quad's direction, this is all you need to do is literally copy and paste in the CLI the information there um, and load it up, and that way you don't have to take the quad apart other than changing the camera area. question we get a lot is flight controller upgrades or beta flight upgrade oh updating beta flight um there's really no need i mean guys uh these are if you're running an f3 and all that having the latest and greatest firmware yeah if you know what you're doing awesome but these quads fly so good out of the box yeah um i just went to the park yesterday and i was flying with some buddies and they were all amazed on how good this little et 115 was flying um and they were like how'd you tune it and i was like guys this is Stunk. out of the box other than rates I, all i did was turn up the actual rates yep. um uh, 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 rotation um, so realistically, I mean, yeah, you can tune them, you can tweak them a little more, but right, but you don't need to, definitely box. don't need to um, put the latest firmware on here. Yeah, the, the latest firmware, I mean, there's weird things all the time with Betaflight. Mm -hmm. You might like lose your real LED uh, capability and all that, and just stuff like that. And if you don't know what you're doing, you could really cause a lot more problems, or you just have a very expensive paperweight at yeah. that point. So for those who like to upgrade and update all your drivers and your firmwares, this one is not the one to do it with, at least if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. If you um, are gonna do it though, if you have to, you're not listening, you, you just <laughs> insist on updating the firmware, please do that CLI dump, back up everything. Um, make a file, make sure you remember what firmware version you had prior. And if you do it, that way if something screws up, you can always fall back. All right. um, if you don't have that fallback, that backup, then you're gonna be um, up the creek without a paddle. So. Yeah. And so we've seen it, we've pretty much seen it all because we've heard it all. And then another question we get all the time is about drivers. Okay, yeah, so if you guys are having trouble getting the computer to connect, um, if you can't get it to pull up and show the COM port in the corner, uh, one, check, make sure your cable is a true data cable. That's a That's a common, problem. even with and me, I've had some. I've had cables that just don't work, and mm -hmm. I've had USB ports that don't work, so sometimes it's a matter of going to a different USB port, etc. cetera. Um, if you try that, you plug it in the computer, you can hear it make a sound like it's recognizing something plugged in, but it's not doing anything. Um, there's a, uh, application called RC Driver Fixer. You can download that, plug in the quad to the computer, have Betaflight open, open up RC Driver Fixer, and then run the app, and it will automatically install the necessary drivers mm. for you um, to get the, the connect, quad to connect to the computer again. So that's a great little resource. We'll have a link below on that one. Uh, there's a ton of little YouTube tutorials. There's some good uh, articles online about further how to use it and all that too. Right. Uh, we'll link to some of those too. So we're gonna take the mini split here. And one thing you're gonna find is, how is that gonna plug into that? You get two of the same side. Doesn't happen. Well, it comes with a cable in the packaging right here. So, you could, in theory, plug one into the other if you move the pins around, because these do not match up. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in to show you what I'm talking about. If you plug it in and then plug it in, you're gonna have a good or a bad time. <laughs> um, so basically, the red is going to the see yellow. You'll see yellow, black, and red line up on this side, but yellow and red are reversed on this side. So you have to lift pins and move it around. So what we need to do is 
take an exacto and if you don't know how to do this this is pretty easy um could you again well could you actually cut the wires and then just resolder them if you're yeah. not very good at that yeah all right so there's two ways to do it or three ways to do it one way is lift the pins two ways snip the wire three ways is just bypass the so i just thing. lifted those little plastic tabs not too much because you don't want to break them I'll take it out and i'm just going to move the red over and there you go there you go so that's that. Now, if you are OCD freak or anything like that, and you don't want all this excessive wire, you could solder right to that. Now we're gonna mount the split. The cool thing, going back to this, the cool thing I like about this is I could take off the whole entire split and keep it all as one little module, one little pod, if you call it that. So that's why I like that. So we're gonna take some of the hardware that it came with, I'm gonna dump it out right here. All right. All right. So the way I'm thinking here, one of the ways, depending on how the part was made, you could run this st standoff that comes with the run cam there, run the little short nut on top, and then run one of these screws from the board. So it'd be like this, this, and then that with the board in between. And that's what the screws actually just came with. This, mm -hmm. the, sorry, the, the longer screws. Sorry. There's yeah. four longer screws. So you'd use the four longer screws there. Um, and that could mount it there. And where would the board go? Board the board go would right. go in between these two. So it'd be like that. Okay. Like that. Okay. All right. So just you have. So I use the four longer button head screws, the plate, the four longer button head screws. Then I used four of those standoffs there with the threads on the other side. Okay. Turn it over real quick and let's show everybody that, that plate you're talking about. This is the. Yeah. So what's that? That helps there. secure the SD card from ejecting. Right. And if you crash, and it holds that connector on. Right. Run that through, and the way I did it is the plate going to the bottom there, and then I'm just going to use these short little uh, hex nuts on the top. Um, make sure you don't over tighten it. And depending on the plastic you use, don't use Loctite, guys. Yeah. If you're gonna if you want to secure it with thread lock. Use a drop of super glue, just standard super glue. Loctite tends to melt plastic, so unless the material you're using is known to withstand Loctite from melting, just use a dab of super glue to secure it. You're not you're talking not in the threads. On the threads, what? as thread locker. Just oh, a little geez. drop Inside? on the thread and then put the nut on. Well, yeah. Well, you're just a little All drop. Right. Um so now the last thing to do is to mount the actual run cam. Oops. Problem is we are doing a custom mod, so with custom mods comes needing spare parts, or parts hardware that's not necessarily in the kit. Yeah. So in this case, we are gonna need two M two by five screws to secure the camera. Again, okay. this is something I get grabbed out of my hardware box, so that's that. All right, now the last step. Does this actually fit through there or no? It doesn't. Yes, it does. It does? Mm hmm Tuck a bunch of wires. And make sure you don't pinch no. the wires. Yeah. That's See, sure. right now I'm actually sitting on that connector, which is a little close, and I want to make sure I'm not forcing anything down. And check our camera wires. I almost pinched that one there. So I got everything. Yep, it's good to go. So now I'm going to mount it. All right, so all three screws are in, and we're good to go, right? Yeah. That's pretty much everything there. So you just converted the ET-115 V2 to a Cinewhoop, they call them. Cinnabun? Cinnabun. Cinnawhoop. Yeah. Cinnabun. Let's, uh, let's plug it in and see if we get any smoke. Plug it in for smoke. Check for smoke. <laughs> Yay, no smoke. So everything's on. Now plug it in. Your beta flight screen's on there. Run cam's on there. And it's on! You pass, sir! Good job. I'm gonna go ahead and put a zip tie down on the wires. And again, not very hard. That's just so yeah. the wires don't flop up and get caught and broken in the end. Yeah. Uh, 117 and a half. grams. That is... Also includes all the grass stains. Oh, and yeah, the extra dirt. All around the edges. And the brand new one is... 98 so, so about 19 grams difference yeah is that a lot for these little guys considering we're going to an hd that's a heck of a lot less weight than a gopro yeah. so that's that's a great little mod then overall yeah that guy right there is he's four and a half grams <laughs>